Today we're going to talk about Fuse Meltdown, especially in the car audio world, why it happens and how to fix that problem. You saw it in the thumbnail, melted fuse holder. So I want to show you a few different pictures here showing how it melted uh, and what it ended up with the result was. And as you can see that the plastic is all melted around the bolt on one side um, more than the other. You can also see that the uh, metal is actually deformed and the plating on the metal uh, has come off. <clears throat> and that actually is important. That plating is part of the issue. Uh, and you can see on this fuse, on the end where it's where it slipped out of the uh, bolt there, you can see all of these little points uh, where arcing has happened. That's where the, the, the power has jumped from one conductor to another that weren't connected. <coughs> that arcing is caused by a loose connection. And uh, you can actually, if you look for the arcing, you can always tell what connection was loose. And on a side note, whenever I got the cover of this thing off, the end literally fell off of it. It wasn't touching anymore. This had, I bet it was noisy as crap before it finally uh, got his attention. But um, it, it was a bad situation. Now the plating, I was mentioning the plating. When you have that metal that's plated with another metal, that plating can start to degrade. And if that plating degrades, it can also cause problems. Because whenever your plating is removed from the metal, now you have a gap in between the, the metal and the other metal, and you, you've left the space there. That's not a good thing. Um, and this is something I didn't see coming until I started investigating uh, the failure mode. Now, of course, the failure mode was the bolt backed out. Um, and there are multiple ways to solve that problem. Over time, uh, these things happen. One of the ways you can solve it is with the application of a little blue Loctite on the thread. Just put a little dab on there when you screw it in, and then that's one thing. You can also use a crush washer. <coughs> the split kind of crush washer is a, a high torque crush washer. It needs to be torqued down quite a bit to get it to work. So it's it works okay, depending on the type of fuse holder you have. Uh, the, the ones that have all the little jagged edges around them, little burrs, are better for a low torque application like this. But if you can, if your if your uh, fuse holder will allow for a crush washer, a split crush washer, and a lot of torque, then that works. You just got to make sure that you're using that crush washer above the fuse, below the bolt head. It needs to be on top, um, and that can also help. But to be perfectly honest, the best way to make sure this doesn't happen is to every month or two or you know whatever get out there and check you know go through pull your cover off check your bolts on your fuses at least for a while check and make sure that they're still tight because <coughs> they get loose and then whenever they get loose a little bit loose then the, you get a bad connection the bad connection creates heat the heat uh, swells and shrinks the metal and it makes the connection looser and the looser connection makes more heat. More heat makes the connection looser, blah, blah, blah. It snowballs. There's no coming back from that. You've got to tighten it up or it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. And then, uh, the funny thing is a fuse will not blow from heat. You can melt this thing down into a puddle and it will still be conducting electricity. And I'm going to say that one more time. The fuse will not blow from heat. It will only blow from being overcurrented. So your fuse is gonna melt into a puddle and not blow because the fuse isn't the problem. Your current isn't the problem. What the problem is, is a loose connection. 
So the, the, the moral of the story is a good solid connection that is tight and is maintained tight uh, using of course uh, good crimps also because a bad crimp can create a loose connection at the end of the wire. So let's say you've got your cable running into your into your lug and the crimp is weak and it's just you know there's not a lot of conductivity happening there that lug and crimp combination can create heat too that can cause things to get hot and uh, if that connection there is making that spot get hot then you're going to heat the bolts up you're going to loosen the bolts up over time and you're going to create more problems so the problem can come from a loose lug or a badly crimped lug a loose bolt anywhere two conductors are con touching each other and connected if there's not a solid connection you're going to start getting heat heat's going to make the connection worse and it's going to snowball so do your maintenance keep track of your stuff if you're running a bunch of wires a bunch of power wires check them every once in a while because it only takes one to cause meltdown anyway guys if this is helpful hit the subscribe button in the middle Makes my life better. Makes everybody's life better. If you've got any issues with fuses in the past or any tips for anybody else, leave them in the comments. Thanks, guys. Peace.